Peanut butter, you should only have one or two ingredients. That's peanuts and salt or salt if the peanut butter has salt. Okay. That's it. So when you look at the peanut butters available in the grocery store, they have hydrogenated oils. They can have sugar added. So you, you they can have preservatives. So you don't need these ingredients. That The more that you have these ingredients, the more processed that it is. Okay. So that's what you want to look for. Yeah. Okay. And it still could be organic, but still have those Correct. ingredients. Yeah. Yes. Interesting, because those and ingredients are not necessarily organic per se. They don't. They're not natural, right? No, like most of those, like preservatives, emulsifiers, artificial sweeteners, artificial food colors. Those are mostly made in a lab. So it could be like a, a, a chemical, or it could be an oil that's, you know, hydrogenated. Um, that just means that the product's going to have a longer shelf life, but that oil is very inflammatory. Um, but it's used by the food industry, right? Because obviously if you have, the thing about food is if you have produce like broccoli and apples, you know, veggies, you have to sell those fast or they're going to go bad and there goes your money, there goes your profit. But what if you can make food or make something, call it food, that can last you for a very long time? Right, the shelf life, um, right. and you, it's going to bring more money and all that, and that's what food companies do. And I think that's where people are confused, like as consumers, like I've been confused even with the designations that you've shared that I have, because um, even though I have a lot of schooling and a lot of training, I wasn't prepared, or I didn't learn about like the food industry and, and like the food that we are sold. Um, so so that, that's what I mean. But if the average guy it, or lady goes into the supermarket, it's heading down to the organic area. Now that you are in the organic area, now you're supposed to look at the ingredients label. And the simpler it is, the better it is for you. Okay. Like you said, if you can pronounce these things, <clears throat> like the hydrogenated oil and stuff like that, those are hard things to Yeah. You don't want You that. don't really know what those are, correct? Right. So you yeah. don't want that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But so I would advise people to try to stay away from processed foods. I mean, that was what you guys asked me at the beginning. If there's one thing that I would recommend for people is to start to recognize that the processed foods, which are packaged foods that have all these added ingredients and salt, sugar, and fat are what's causing like obesity and diabetes and high blood pressure and all these things. And they are confusing. So the food industry likes to put these labels and you know different things on the food product to make us feel better about them. But it's just confusing because at the end of the day, they're highly processed. Mm -hmm. And it's not that you know you should avoid like if you like chocolate or chips or ice cream, that's fine. You can enjoy that, but it's not an every day, every week sort of thing in my opinion. So when you say processed foods, <laughs> the thing that comes to mind is like, the hams that come packaged or salamis and stuff like that is that that also that? counts as processed foods um but think about like um like frozen frozen foods that counts um cookies processed breads like um that counts the ice cream cereal breakfast cereal all of those different things that um it's very hard Basically, if you buy a product and you look at the ingredients and you and you try to go purchase those ingredients and remake it, if you're not able to do that, then that is ultra processed. Think about Oreo cookies. Think about Cheez-Its, which are like my favorite. Um, mm. Those are highly processed and it's just they're not good for us. So, so, so I always like to give uh, them, let's say, an alternative. So like you're eating cereal every morning. I was doing that. That was my breakfast, cereal with a banana in it. Uh, or your kids are eating cereal every morning. Mm -hmm. What could they replace it with? Is it an organic cereal or would it be even something else that you would recommend that they replace, let's say, cereal? Let's attack that one, for example. Yeah. So cereal, you can try to find a cereal that has less sugar everybody's in different phases right so if you're eating something that has a bunch of sugar you can try to find one with less sugar you can look at the ingredient list if it has less than 10 ingredients you're doing a good job the less the better if you're able to pronounce those ingredients 
that's better. So that can be an option. Choose a better cereal. Even though I've looked at a lot of cereals and I can tell you like 98% of them are no good. There's just a bunch of sugar. But you can try if you wanted to stick with cereal. Um, you can also swap it for like, I don't know, you could do chia pudding. <laughs> that's something that like people like to replace. Or you can, if you, if, if eggs don't increase your cholesterol, you can have egg-based, you know, breakfast. You can use yogurt as well. If you're buying a yogurt that doesn't have added sugars, do that. Add nuts and seeds. You know, that increases protein. That's another option um, that we can do. But kids love cereal. Kids love cereal. And, and, <laughs> and that, Pop-Tarts. That kind of, yeah, because it has sugar, right? And um, sugar, even though I'm saying like, yeah, we, I think we all know that sugar isn't healthy. Um, I think what people don't know is the amount of sugar that is in food products. And um, that sugar, not only, you know, does it cause you to gain weight and like all these like health conditions, but a lot of our food that shouldn't have sugar has sugar. So like tomato sauce, um, or, you know, cereal, bread, yogurt. I said yogurt, like you can buy yogurt for breakfast, but you can easily buy a yogurt with a bunch of added sugar and they're, you know, you're in the same spot. But the food industry knows that we like sugar, so they add sugar to a lot of the foods. And then that makes us, makes our taste buds used to that sugar, that like sweet flavor. And it makes it harder for people to when they want to like eat healthier, like choose something, something else. Um, I don't know why we love sugar, but we do. And like kids love sugar too. If we're susceptible to it, they're even more susceptible to it. Like we're not supposed to feed sugar to kids until they're at least two years old. Um, but you see a lot of food products, you know, for kids that have a ton of sugar. So you're right, kids do love sugar. But I think as, you know, parents or like future parents, you have to be aware of that. Um, and not try to not feed the kid, you know, processed sugar, give him fruit. Food has natural sugar, but it also comes with fiber and vitamins and minerals that are going to be better um, for the kid.